Nivea cream formulation is based on the combination of occlusive, moisturizing emollient and humectant ingredients. This creates a very thick inconsistency cream that is actually hard to spread on your skin, but it gives you moisture like no other and there is a reason why this cream is the OG of the skincare. Now let's break down the ingredients first. The most important group of ingredients are the occlusive ingredients. I will list them on the screen and they actually form a physical barrier on your skin and prevent the water from evaporating from your skin and that's how they lock in the moisture. Then we have emollient ingredients. Now they also slow down the evaporation of water from your skin, but they also act as lubricants on the skin surface and they give you your skin a soft, smooth appearance. And last but not least are the moisturizing humectants like glycerin and panthenol that increase the water content of the top layers of your skin by drawing in moisture and they pretty much act as water magnets. It is important to say that some of the ingredients that are included in the Nivea are potentially comedogenic. What comedogenic means is that it can potentially clog pores and thus result in blackheads, whiteheads and comedones. So consider this a little warning of mine. Now let's talk about the sensor characteristics of the cream. As I said already, it's very thick and very hard to spread on your skin. You have to work it in and you have to warm it up to make it more spreadable, but nonetheless, it gives you a lovely, radiant, and very well moisturized finish. And I think this is a great moisturizer for anyone who has dry skin. Now let's see how it performs on my dry skin and also as a makeup base. Yes, I also decided to test this out before applying makeup on my face just because I wanted to give you a really detailed review. As you can see, I'm really struggling with applying it on my face because of how thick it is and I'm using these tapping motions to make it more spreadable, to work it into the skin and this process takes around five minutes and after that you are left with a very well moisturized skin. Although you have a greasy overlay, you kind of have to wait a while before applying makeup so I waited around an hour and after that I applied makeup one hour later and here's how my face is looking one hour after the application of Navia cream it's still very well moisturized and it still has that stickiness to it and it has that greasy overlay because of that, I did go over my face with a dampened beauty blender just to try to pick up the excess of that grease, if I can say so. And I went straight in with my foundation afterwards. I didn't apply primer because I don't think you can apply primer to a base this greasy. <laughs> but uh, to my surprise, uh, my base actually looked really good after applying foundation on top of this uh, cream because it gave me a really natural, moisturized, radiant, glowy look. The only difficulties that I experienced were that the foundation wouldn't stick to certain areas of my face that it normally would, like the nose area, for example. And now that I'm watching this footage, I actually love the effect that it created and the foundation and my skin overall looked really radiant and moisturized. And of course, I had to set this with a lot of face powder. I used the Rimmel No Color Setting Powder. And after this, I went ahead and I finished the rest of my makeup. And stay tuned because after this, I will be giving you my final opinion regarding the Nivea cream. If you're new to this channel, let me introduce myself. I am a pharmacist specialized in cosmetology and that's why I make these fun informative videos in which I analyze ingredients of makeup and cosmetic products. I post a new video every 10 days, so if you don't want to miss out on any of my uploads, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Now let's talk about the Nivea cream. The pros of this cream would be that it is very thick, very occlusive, very moisturizing, and this can make your skin moisturize even in the coldest days of winter, and this is really good for dry skin. The formulation is based on the very occlusive ingredients that are going to form a protective layer on your skin, and they are going to stop the water from evaporating from your skin. This is incredibly important for people with dry skin. I love using it in winter and besides that I don't only use it on my face. I think this is a really good cream to use on your body. You have those big tins uh, that you can buy now and on your hands. I love using it on my hands and during these difficult times we are washing our hands more than usual so this cream is doing wonders for my dry hands. And one more pro that I will list as a pro but maybe some people would list as a con uh, is the fragrance in it and the smell. This smells divine. I love the smell. And ever since I did that a review on the Vichy Slow Age Day Cream, you can check it out right here. I started appreciating a good smell in cosmetic products, <laughs> a pleasant smell of the cosmetic product. If you watch that video, you know that the Vichy uh, Slow Age Day Cream has a very unpleasant smell, or for me at least, it was very unpleasant. So I love the way Nivea smells. It has a really nice smell, not too strong. 
So for me, it gives me no orientations and I usually don't react to fragrances in a cosmetic product. If you are the type of person who is going to react to a fragrance in a cosmetic product, then be warned. Now let's talk about the cons. So the first con would be that this formulation has a couple of potentially comedogenic ingredients and that it could clog your pores and potentially break you off. For me, that didn't happen, but maybe for you it will, just be warned. I cannot give you any guarantees here. Second con for me would be that it is really difficult to spread it on your face because of how thick it is and how high the viscosity is of this cream. So as you saw in the beginning, I was using these tapping motions to spread it around my face because I didn't want to pull my face because every time you pull your skin, you are creating yourself more wrinkles. So I would like to avoid that and because of that, I like using creams that are easily spreadable around the face. For uh, this one, that is not the case. Unfortunately, I need around five minutes to spread it evenly on my face in the morning for me that's just way too much time and we're way too much effort to put in applying a day cream another con would be that it does not have any uv filters in case you were planning on using this as a day cream every single day maybe that wouldn't be smart because it has no uh, uv filters so that would be another con for me but as a night cream you could use it potentially a makeup application could be a pro and con at the same time because for me at when i was applying the foundation on top of it at first i thought this cannot be good if the base is too greasy um how am i going to put foundation on top of this but uh, after i applied powder so this is the first one for me i can never set my face with a lot of powder because it's too dry but today even after applying a lot of powder on my face it's still looking radiant and dewy because of the base so i am actually loving this cream before makeup at the moment this is a surprise for me as well but of course this is very individual you will love this only if you have really really dry skin if you're normal or oily this will be a disaster before makeup as in every video take into consideration everything that i've said so far and figure out would this be good for you or not as always thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on my future uploads and see you in the next video stay safe bye